to go over your paper? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so I've met with um, most of the municipalities that have recycling programs. Um, I, I still have a few left, like Sheffield and um, I'm trying, oh, Pleasant. I haven't been to Pleasant yet, but I've been to most of the other ones. And uh, I have a very good sense of um, at least what they're doing and what they're, they're dealing with. Um, it's interesting, they, one of the things that I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to talk to uh, Dan Glotz about, I haven't talked to him yet, is um, the county bought the, as far as I know, all the bins um, with a grant um, years ago. And apparently um, Advance has been taking the bins and then replacing them with not nice bins. Like apparently they had new bins and then they've just been taking them and then the, the word is is that uh, you know we can't keep track of them and all this kind of stuff. So I have to talk to Dan to see what the situation is legitimately and uh, because I was under the impression going into it that we own the bins. Um, so um, I'm curious to see what you know and, and it's kind of one of those things too like everybody kind of has their own view of their ownership of them. Um, so that's kind of a question mark. Um, I did see through going to them how the county, I think, can um, collaborate with them and, and perhaps reduce um, everyone's costs. Um, because essentially what's happening is, is you have all of the rural uh, municipalities that are paying advance to essentially take all of their materials to the transfer station in Pittsfield, I believe and then transferring it to Buffalo to be sorted. So the cost for Advance to ship all that stuff is pretty excessive. And um, I, I, I think there's a way that perhaps we could get more municipalities recycling and, and also uh, um, get more material for our own facility down the road. Um, I've had a conversation with uh, the, we had our first big meeting with the engineering firm last week. It went very well. Um, I've started talking with them about uh, putting together a feasibility study for the center that will essentially be used for the, to get recruit grant money to finalize our plans as far as what, how it will potentially be set up, what equipment we would need, that kind of thing. Um, to go along with that is the DCD um, application that we put in, one of the elements of that, um, which is the <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just doing stream of consciousness. <laughs> DCED, we put in the application at the end of last, or maybe it's today, but I thought it was Friday, to do the um, fiscal review of the county as a part of their early intervention program. One of the elements that we put on our RFP was, there were several elements, but to do a fiscal financial feasibility study for the recycling center based on all the data that we have on what, what potentially we could get. This would be done in collaboration with our uh, solid waste consultant um, in order to get as complete a plan of the system as possible. Um, the idea being that it be that it have a long-term sustainability setup, and that um, and that we try to get as much money out of it, and get, get it run it as lean as lean as possible. Um, so a lot of good things going on with that. Um, one of the things that the engineering firm is going to be doing is um, surveying the site. Um, uh, my thought was to, you know, get a floor plan of the building, survey the area, um, in order to get as much information as possible. Because some of the things that we talked about potentially doing uh, might require more space, and I'd like to have a surveyed. Um, a surveying map and all of the data related to it so that if we decide to do some landscaping in order to incorporate other elements into the site down the road that we can do that, especially if we can partner with the city and some other municipalities to, to do some other things and expand the operation. Um, do, 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 do. I should have wrote down my list before I started talking. <laughs> not, to, not to break your chain of thought, but can yep. I ask you a question about, um, and I know you're just studying the feasibility stage and everything mm -hmm. else. If this was a go, would the recycling center sort of be 
under a department of accounting somehow, or is there any chance that maybe this solid waste authority that is post-closure should maybe not be closing and would they become the authority overseeing the recycling center in some way? Would there the, be any probably, to the, that? The, probably the way it would work is that the uh, solid waste authority would essentially be in charge of it okay. to some degree. So, and then the, the, the officer, whoever the recycling officer would be, would end up being an employee of the county through the solid waste authority. But the other alternative would be the conservation district. That would be a possibility too. Okay. N neither one. Uh, yeah, we're that. That's part of the planning of it. Right now. Yeah, that's part of the planning of it. But that's definitely a consideration because where it ends up. I mean, there are a lot of different. Um, I don't want to say strings, but there are considerations in either of those two scenarios. Then there's other places the person could go to, like if we wanted to have more direct control of it. That's. I wasn't sure how much control that's that you wanted, and the, the Solid Waste Authority does have its own federal ID number, its own insurance, it had mm -hmm. its own employees could, again, I guess, if it was not going to fully be the way, the way. But I don't know if there's requirements for the grants, too, that it's got to be through the county as opposed to an authority underneath the yeah. county or whatever. I think that a lot of that's going to be, to some degree, ironed out by the consultant. Um, okay. She's the one who's going to make most of the recommendations based on her um, understanding of like the regional setup. So like Elk County, for instance, their recycling coordinator is under the solid, their solid waste authority and then they kind of manage all of the contracts with the various vendors. But their solid waste authority is still functioning. Functioning, yeah, yeah absolutely, so. yeah. Um, they're, they're the ones that I found out that there, that there are multiple landfills in the state of Pennsylvania that they closed. I don't know, Some someone started Say it's kind of stating that that we had the first. There's the first many. <laughs> there's many apparently, and I don't know where anybody got the idea that. Yeah, I don't know where that came from, but um, I I was under the impression because I made that statement. They're like, no, we got a landfill right over here. We close. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, they had two landfills that, that were like side by side or something like that that they had shut down. Was ours just because it's on national forest land? No, it was the first. I thought that was the thing about it. Right? I, it. It might have been the first. I mean, I the impression that I got was there are places all over the state that have been shut down. Some of them are covered up by um, parking lots. Some of them, you know, like so. There's, you know, I don't know. Maybe it is the first, but uh, I didn't ask them the date of when it was shut down. They just made it sound like it was, you know, it was that it was the originator. So. They were the first to try to close. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody yeah. else succeeded and we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out of curiosity, now I know to the Ute, uh, there's benefits to their Lions Club. The Lions Club handles it. Mm -hmm. They basically manage the whole thing. And um, that, that's one of the reasons why they've really remained solvent. And they do all the sorting down there before it's separated and they, they, they really go above and beyond down there. Um, which is, you know, that's part of the issue with us too is trying to set up a system where we sort it and then we have contracts with various brokers to, to get the best deal for cardboard plastic and everything. And that's the other thing too is that every site is taking different stuff and I haven't been able to figure that out either. That's kind of a tradition traditional thing like it's just well this is the contract we have and I, I can't figure out why there's they're they're differentiating but uh, the goal is to get each site to take as much stuff as possible like because cardboard for instance is one of the few things that you can get some decent money on so um, I went so long on this recycling thing from what the other item I was going to talk about was oh yeah that's right the, uh, I think that's all I've got on that issue right now. Um, I talked with Dan, um, or D Dan Glotz was uh, basically after the situation with the park bench, or the, the, the bench bit on the, the um, bike hike trail. Um, I asked Dan Glotz to seek out um, a, somebody to build benches for it that would be a member of the community. Part of that is because um, I went and talked to um, the, um, the Career Center 
and they have a great program up there, but they're pretty occupied with the Habitat for Humanity house, and I really wanted to get the benches built as soon as possible in order to have them set up down there. Um, and Dan was nice enough to find a, um, uh, a, a, a Eagle Scout, um, a Boy Scout that is um, trying to get his, and I, don't know, I wish I had my notes with me, I should have grabbed them, but um, he, he's trying to move up to become an Eagle Scout, I believe. And uh, so he's going to do this as his project, his community project, as part of his community service. We're meeting with him this week. I'm really excited about this. We're going to use um, Act 13 funds in order to buy the materials. They're going to come up with a design, present it to us um, as a part of an overall plan to put multiple benches along the bike hike trail. And basically, we're going to offer materials. He'll be coordinating with um, you know other people in the community to do carpentry and other things in order to really you know produce a really nice bench I've given them a bunch of, of options of stuff that I like um, if anybody has any recommendations just let me know I'd be happy to forward them to Dan and um, so I think that I think that relatively quickly we should have more benches on that trail it'll be um, artisanal in nature nice benches for people to sit on I told I kind of um, I really wanted them to be nice for people so that I could spend some time down there. One of the other things that we're going to be working on is how we can further develop the trail in order to have more space for people to spend time down by the river down there and, and enjoy the, the uh, you know, enjoy the, the public space. Um, I think those are my two big ones. <laughs> All the other stuff I think I've got to get more work done on before I present. Okay. I'll come back and put that in my stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, there's not something. What? <laughs> well, I, I, I've been talking to Mac because obviously we're going to be, uh, we're, work's going to get done on the, on the, the or the, uh, the, Parking lot. Mm -hmm. Parking lot needs really needs work on. He's wor um, talked to a couple different companies that are coming to take a look at it and make recommendations. Um, as a part of the whole signage bit, which um, it's my intention to get him a the map based on my notes from our walkthrough to this week, because um, I want to get the signs ordered, mm -hmm. is to have a discussion about making edits to this side of the building in the form of a walkway that goes oh, yeah, all yeah. the way up the side of the building. Yeah, we had talked about that. And then essentially making this stretch one way all the way up. Right. Like, and then having a sign that says one way, you can only enter there, um, keeping those two and enter exit, and then just making it so that you can only come up this way, because that's the only way to extend the space so that you literally can have a single vehicle. Right. The main problem now being that since people can't enter the front of the building, yeah. they have to walk awkwardly along the side yeah. of the building directly in traffic. Yes, which is, I think, a, a lot of Huge liability, yeah. And, and so... Huge. Huge. <laughs> so, yeah, so I figured what we would do is that the, the path would come off of the sidewalk and um, all the way up. And, and I figured that what we could do is talk to the engineering firm. The other thing is is to have, um, like we had talked about the posts out front of the... We're, yeah, so let me pick up from there. We actually just got done meeting about the P-Corp grant, mm -hmm. which is $15,000 uh, for this year to do improvements um, related to safety of both employees and uh, members of the public. So. We came up with a lot of different little projects that we've been talking about, mainly replacing concrete pads and mm -hmm. um, putting awnings out on various doorways so that mm -hmm. ice doesn't build up right at the doorway. Mm -hmm. It'll get rain covered and whatever when we're trying to get in. Um, and other lots of little random things, but one of the things that we did put in our tentative mm -hmm. 15 grand grant was to put some sort of um, chain and post uh, out on that 
wall mm -hmm. because it's more than eight inches, so it's a liability that yep. we can't really let people be stepping on for that. Yep. So we'll hopefully get that approved and we'll have a grant paid for that. Okay. Now, as for redoing any of the parking lot, um, the we uh, in uh, wearing our hats as fiduciary agents of the mm -hmm. um, endowment fund, mm -hmm. so not a public meeting, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, approved up to ten thousand last year out of the road fund in order to do just that, and we have spent all of our almost none of that, correct? We may have touched it. I all. think we may have spent a thousand on fixing some various stuff over at the warehouse. Oh, okay. But it wasn't. It may have been thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah, point being, we still got a decent chunk there to put towards something like that. Yeah, because I, what I was thinking is um, engaging the engineering firm, mm -hmm. having them do, and like, having them do a parking study. Yeah, and and just basically lump in the stuff that we think we need, like we might even do, you know, maybe even talk about the pad down there for the smoking area oh, right. so and get everybody away from the, the yeah, yeah. entries. Because right. that, that wouldn't, I don't think that would cost too much. I didn't even think about that. Mm. <coughs> While we're pouring all this concrete for the other things, maybe we want to have them quote putting that smoker pad out there. Yeah. So do you, are you okay with me engaging the yeah, engineering yeah. firm and then just saying we want concrete pad and then, because we could, I well, guess. Well, the concrete pad could probably, yeah, yeah, say that, but I mean, we're getting the stuff quoted for the other concrete pads too, so we might as well do that all at once. The concrete pads like out here though, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, are any yeah, other? Yeah, but they're pouring concrete over on you know, oh, yeah. the outside of the building, we may as well do the side too. Well, I'm just wondering if they have to, what level of work they'd have to do to accommodate the like the the, the parking lot being reworked. Yeah, I really, you need that plan done first. So. Yes, totally go go for that. Okay. All right. So that was the first thing on my list. P Corp. Just FYI, basically, that's what we're applying for. That's what I figured. You had talked about it before, I think. Yeah, a while ago. But now it's actually due at the end of the month, so <laughs> there you go. Got to like everything else. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, co-working slash business accelerator space update. Um, I am having the Radius co-working space out of Erie come down to visit with us um, on Wednesday. It'll be me and Jim Decker taking it. The idea would be. In order to get ultimately to the business accelerator that we want to, we need to start by uh, creating a little bit of a co-working community as an initial you know, project in order to test out the idea of the model, start building the community so that when the incubator slash business accelerator is done, we have people to occupy it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be going to present to the chamber um, hopefully the next board meeting, or next executive board meeting anyway, to chat about the idea of them uh, fielding some of the cost of maybe running a temporary space in order to start that. Mm -hmm. And again, partnering with the Radius and Erie. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm having them come down just to check out the viability of it, um, and then hopefully create some sort of a partnership so that if you could become a member of the co-working space in Warren, um, you know, for, 30 days out of the month, that if you're up in Erie for something and you need an office space, they'll provide it and vice versa mm -hmm. for a couple days a month. So I've already pitched the idea to a bunch of local entrepreneurs and they all love it. So mm -hmm. Good. I mean, just in itself, you could probably save money. So if you think about it, you go to Erie um, and you hunker down at Starbucks or whatever to work, you're going to spend oh, yeah. 20 bucks on coffee over a couple of days, we might as well spend that towards dues to warn mm -hmm. uh, incubators or business co-working yep. space. So making progress on that, I also met with uh, our government affairs team last week um, when I was in Harrisburg, and um, I, and also Deputy Secretary Scott Dunkelberger mm -hmm. regarding our co-working uh, business accelerator mm -hmm. project. And everything seems to be going as smoothly as we could mm -hmm. conceivably have it. Mm -hmm. um, I still need, the next step for this is going to be probably engaging our architect firm 
to do a feasibility study on a couple properties, um, neither of which I'll identify in a public meeting because real estate clause of the Sunshine Act. But um, I'm missing your apartment, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's a building that I own. <laughs> no. <clears throat> um, so I don't know how we want to cover that, though. We want to try to ask the chamber to do it, or should the county try to cover it? I don't know. I'd roll the dice with the chamber. See right. what they see. See what they say, and if they don't go for it, then. I mean, we, we're we're going to end up doing a lot of stuff for them over the next year, so. Yeah. Well, but at the same time, <laughs> what are they here for? I think they're the um, mock trial. Is it the mock trial? I, I didn't know. They had a group. Of, they had one group of kids come through this morning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the second group. Interesting. Um, anyway, I will. I do need to do a feasibility study, mm -hmm. uh, so the money's going to have to come from somewhere to yeah. hire someone to do it. Yeah. The other thing though, is I was thinking, why go through the bidding process and whatever if we could just use our oh yeah, context. absolutely. So and much support. I know, but if that's the case, then the money has to come from somewhere. And I know that we had spitballed the idea during budget time of setting aside some contingency money for. The project not as defined as saying mm -hmm. that specifically, but anyway, I'll see what the chamber says, and if they don't go for it, or it makes more sense to run it through the county, then I'll come back at the next work session. And well, I, I, what I would say in the meantime is talk to the engineering firm and ask them what they think it would cost to do the feasibility yeah. study, and then we can go from there. Because then, okay. you know, if it's it, if it doesn't seem like it's going to be extravagant in order to get the thing done, then you know we'll we'll figure something out. Okay. So that's my uh, co-working business accelerator update. Everything's going really well, basically. On track. Uh, for RRC, um, we got that furniture from the Erie Career Link. It's all at our county warehouse now. Um, the RRC has come through and selected at least the initial furniture that they want. Um, so I'm hopefully going to get an inmate crew up there to start assembling stuff, clean it up, you know, do some touch-up paint and such over the coming couple weeks. Um, I also had my first meeting with the RRC this morning regarding um, marketing. I think they've got a great team in place for it. Mm -hmm. They are pretty insightful. I was impressed. So uh, everything on the RRC is going well. Um, I'm not sure if you saw the email from the chamber about it. Um, a request for financing, which we'll have to explore at another time, so I haven't had time to really look at it until before this meeting. Um, I wanted to raise a couple things related to workforce development. Uh, the first is that the um, Workforce Development Board put out RFPs for a new provider currently, or operator, currently it's GCAC out of Erie. Mm -hmm. There have been some complaints by residents in Warren County that um, you know, GCAC isn't really servicing Warren County very well, um, so I volunteered to be on the board that is actually, or the subcommittee that's um, looking at all the, the RFPs, or not the RFP, we already put the RFP out, all the proposals that we received mm -hmm. back in, and ended up getting 600 pages of reading, which has to be done by Monday, so <laughs> I know what I'm going to be doing this weekend when I go evaluating proposals. Um, but anyway, uh, the other thing was, I had mentioned it to Senator Casey, Representative Rapp, and Senator Hutchinson, an idea where Warren might be a pilot program for um, a block grant related to workforce development to take the WEO dollars based on population poverty rate or some sort of formula, give us a pilot program um, funding in order to work on workforce development, and that could Potentially, if it worked well, send shockwaves through the rest of the workforce development world, I guess. Because um, currently, that money goes to um, a nine—I think it's a nine-county region in the northwest—and mm -hmm. is sort of divvied up by population, sort of not. It's 
It seems you know, like it's far too political a process. It is a very political process, and I think if it just kind of came... Well, the other thing is they're, they're cutting back on what we can use for brick and mortar. And so that's why I've been telling you guys about the idea of moving to a mobile career link model, mm -hmm. which I fully support and think will actually service people better in the future. But the other thing is they still need a space to work out of. Mm -hmm. um, even if it isn't fully accessible to yeah. the public. My thought was, if you just gave the counties money, we could probably slip them in somewhere, oh, yeah. hire them, so, slip them in within our system, you know, uh, and still do the same kind of service. So it would probably be more efficient if we just ran it. At least that's my hunch, which is that's why I approached our legislators with the idea of freeing us up with some sort of a pilot program. And my, I know, I throw ideas at our legislators all the time and don't always get traction. But this one seems to be of interest, so I'll keep you updated. I'll keep well, I don't think anybody's them. really happy with the current setup, so it, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be hard, I think, for them to push that in a different direction. Right. Especially since now it's so uh, popular to do block grants and everything else. I love block grants. <laughs> so silly. Everybody's. All right, upcoming commissioner's meeting, we don't have that until next week, so skip that. Department committee updates, I can't think of anything. I didn't make the last um, department head meeting, so. There were, it got canceled. It got canceled, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody we didn't miss anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. nobody, nobody can make it. Um, schedule, all right, so this week is jammed. I literally don't have a single 15 minute block, except if we end this meeting early. <laughs> Uh, this entire week. It's going to be crazy. A um, couple important highlights though is fire school is this weekend. So I'll be up with uh, probably almost every department in the county will have representatives at the Orange County Fire School. Um, there's the Township Supervisors Dinner on Saturday. Are you going to that? Yes. Alright, cool. Me too. What in the world does that say? Oh, VHS. Uh, on Friday, I'm going to be doing a ride along with uh, Human Services. Uh, so I'll probably be out most of the day for that. Um, then next week, I'm going down to Harrisburg for a class with the uh, County Commissioners Association. So I may leave Sunday, actually, and be down there Monday, do some meetings, take the class Tuesday, and come back. Also, a reminder that Warren Gibbs is coming up really fast. Do you have any thoughts on how the county can help kind of promote Warren Gibbs and get people engaged? I mean, you know, I think we posted something on our Facebook page last year. I did a quick video giving a plug for the fire departments, but is there anything more you can think that we could do to help? Um, I mean, the only, th the only thing I can think of is the, the fence bit. Um, my only issue, putting something on the fence. Oh, yeah. You know, like put, getting a banner for the fence. My only thing is, is that with the fence thing, it can get pretty, it could get hairy if everybody wants stuff there. There's you know, uh, quite a few people that have signed into that this year. Signed into? A into the one gives. Oh, program. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of organizations involved in that now, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, 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 uh, I mean, we could maybe even just do a quick video talking about yeah, um, if we just even put stuff yeah. together really fast. Yeah, just so everybody wants to see more, more of our faces. <laughs> uh, probably rather see your face than mine. So. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they see more of my bald spot than anything else. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why is it that the newspaper always takes pictures from like right above us? Did I, Josh? Did I tell you about that? I was over here last week. We were at a public meeting, and I walked up and introduced myself to this lady. And she's like, um, I said hello, I'm Commissioner Eggleston. And I shook her hand. She goes, oh, she goes, you look so much younger in person. And I go, younger than what? And she goes, well, you look much older in the newspaper. <laughs> and I'm like, so, so television makes you fatter. Newspaper makes you older. <laughs> like, is that how it goes? <laughs> and I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, they've been getting lots of shots in the back of my head lately. I think that's it. But she, she was like, I was, she's like, you look so much younger in person. I'm like, well, I guess that's a good thing, right? I mean, <laughs> rather than like, gosh, you look terrible in person. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, one more scheduling thing on the tenth. Um, I signed us up to teach a marketing class at the high school. 
to the entrepreneurship and we're marketing classes. May time. Yeah, I don't want to. So, okay. at some point we should get together and think about what we want to say. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Can I believe it's one of the night. <laughs> it may I, be. I'm going to go ahead and say it'll probably be the night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I won't, I, I've wanted to go up there and talk to them anyway. So that's okay. Yeah. I just gave on, on um, kind of business management the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, out of that, I, I just went into it saying I'm not going to talk about starting up on the marketing stuff mm-hmm. because either Jeff will come back or Jeff and I will come back. We'll cool. do that later. So yeah, that was the next great. day available um, that works for us. All right. General discussion? Yeah, we're going to have our meeting in Wall City on the 3rd and we'll make a determination then if this uh, Veterans Expo is going to work. Right now we're having a hard time getting vendors to sign up. Mm-hmm. So if we don't have enough vendors uh, as of the 3rd, we will cancel it. Okay. I could get you... You asked for the logo, didn't you? I... Pam already sent it to me. Oh, I've already got my shirts ordered. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And just so you know, if anybody wants to order shirts, our logo, there is so much thread in it mm-hmm. that uh, you have to have them put on the sleeve because they're too heavy for the chest, the chest of the shirt. Hmm. That doesn't surprise me. There's a lot of stuff in there. But they figured out a way to do it through the embroidery? That's pretty impressive. Well, yeah, she, she says she show. can do it, so wow. we're going to see. I ordered five shirts. So. Awesome. Admit, the other day I was noticing the sheriff's. I got his polo and mm-hmm. the seal and everything on it, and I was thinking I might want to buy a couple for myself. Okay. Not three county funds, just... Yeah. At some point. Since you discussed the furniture, did you pull something or something here? Yeah. Okay. But let me tell you how much furniture there is. There's literally two and a half, 52 foot truckloads of furniture. Out there. I know. I was going to go look to see if there was a chair that was better than one. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Um, um, just make sure it's. I think. I think they segregated everything so that if the RRC is getting it, it's in a different room. Yeah. I, I, I talked to Matt. I'm certainly not going down there on my own because I don't even know where I'm going. But I talked to Matt about the possibility of trying to find something if it was available. Sure. Um, were you still, you know? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with our money for secure rural schools because we haven't been able to get them into our bank account yet. Uh, I think that just totally has to do with the route and the transit changing from hmm. First Niagara to Key Bank, but I call people, they call me back, and we're not catching anybody at the same time. Finally did get a hold of one person. We're getting secure rural schools fine? Oh, it comes to us and percent. we disperse it out. Oh, um, I didn't so it know should that. be just yeah, it should be just under half a million, huh? um, and the majority, of fifty percent of it or so, goes to the school district, and the rest goes to any any um, borough or township yeah, yeah, yeah. that has okay. national forest uh-huh. land mm-hmm. it by divided out by acreage. Um, but I mean, we heard rumor that the governor sequestered six percent of it, which I don't believe he technically can do. He tried this before. A different year, and then they ended up giving it back to us later. So I haven't seen the amount yet to know mm-hmm. if we're getting all that's supposed to come through or how we're going to do that. Sequestering it and calling it a management fee or something? I don't know. We don't get any management fee for <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sending it out. <laughs> it's kind of like a liquid fuel situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and. In, in going over that, when I finally did get a hold of someone, apparently we may have a lot of other checks that now that we've hit more than the six month conversion time from First Niagara to Key Bank, that we have a few other accounts that we've got routing in transit, a lot of them being DHS accounts, so I've got to get a hold of Mary and Nano to see if we can head things off before some, you know, when the money just stops time. showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other question I have, and I don't know if the two of you will do this or not, this is sort of a public meeting because the newspaper is here and it was advertised. Um, it's a can, can you sign the agreement for the um, dam patrol? Can do dam patrol. I mean, it was a proposal that was prepared in advance. You've all looked at the proposal two or three months ago. Um, I wouldn't push for this except for the fact the email apparently came in last week when I wasn't here and Ken got it and just put it over here on someone's desk. Um, Yeah, we talked about it during that meeting and I asked that we 
that we make a motion to approve it in advance and then could sign it at a meeting like this, and we shut that down for some reason. Well, nobody had seen the agreement at all. I mean, um, well, let's take the same This is last year. okay. Now, I, I, yeah, I, this yeah. is this is not the forestry agreement. This is the dam. Yeah, it's the yeah, agreement. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. one, this one is coming through with a little bit more money than last year's. Not a lot. Um, and that's my push for trying to get it signed now and get it in. They normally don't start this until Labor Labor Day, till Memorial Day weekend. But for some reason, they have written this earlier that it's to commence May 14th. If we don't get this signed and into them by May 2nd, they will revise the contract, possibly take money back out of it, and use a uh, Memorial Day weekend start date instead of the 14th. I don't know if they're pushed for starting the earlier date. It's just because we've got nice weather and people are up there and they're normally not, or what the reasoning is. But we've, in the past, we've gotten about 12,000. Yeah. I mean, my thing is, is that it's pretty much a formality, so I have no issue with signing. I mean, we're in a public meeting. That's the whole goal. The only thing is, is we may want to check with um, John after the fact. Well, yeah, I think we may want to. Because I would sign it here, and then on when, next Wednesday we'll officially ratify the former. Yeah. Okay. The contract is. Good. Probably the only person that's going to complain would be. Hey, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <they're, laughs> his, his smirk to me is this. I don't know if I want to sign this. Well, they can, they <laughs> <laughs> it's a 70 page contract, but honestly, the first five pages pertain to actively what we're doing. The rest of it says, yes, we don't own back taxes to the government, we haven't hired the wrong contractors for different agreements, and right. you know, it's basically check here, check here, more check here. If you've ever been committed, you know, charged with something, and none of the rest of this applies, but it goes all along with the contract. Same contract that we had last year. The only thing is, every year gets updated by any increase in our hourly rates, benefit costs, or anything else. Um, I think you read my long email about it, maybe, that explained yeah. the difference in the rates between this rate and the rate that we have from other yeah. contracts. But this allows all sorts of costs for your vehicle wear and tear, uniform, dry cleaning. The other thing, I'll just announce, I guess, that I'll sign this and then go actually sign it later. But we have a requisition request for um, a heating and air conditioning unit that's going to one of our 911 backup tower sites. Yeah, um, I think it was like $3,500. Um, it was budgeted for kind of next year's capital. It's not capital. But and, uh, can actually, can I have that? I'll scan it and then. Yeah. You've got a scan of this whole thing without signatures? I don't know. You what? do. I emailed it. Oh, okay. I haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's not like this is at the top of my yeah, I know. list I know. of things to, you know, it's a formality. It's basically we've been through this for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. and, and the proposal was already reviewed and approved in a public meeting, which is basically we tell them our cost and the proposal, then they say, okay, here's how much we'll grant, therefore it'll be this many hours yeah. and this many oh, days. That. So, yes. Oh, I feel yeah. way more comfortable than that. That's, that's <laughs> if you true. want to fight, bring it. We only do fight when we well, that's a good way to do it, I guess. Because um, you totally reminded me of something I was going to bring up and I forgot. Oh, you well, totally forgot. Yep. Well, let's make sure Clay can't check that check. Very happy that you can get it in. Um, I was going to talk about the air conditioning situation in jail, but oh, yeah. we don't need to. I don't, I don't know if we can go over that later. Oh, I, to, oh, I might as well announce it here, but um, there was a there was an air conditioning unit at the 911 center that cools the um, server rooms mm -hmm. that burn up and com is completely kaput like mm -hmm. last, I don't remember, Thursday or something like that. They needed, I want to say it was $1,200 in order to replace it. Mm -hmm. um, due to the nature of the fact that you can't have those servers overheat and then make our entire 911 center go down, mm -hmm. I just right on the spot said so just make it happen. Mm -hmm. So is that that's under the emergency clause, I would say. Is that on with the requisition for the other yeah, condition? That's a different, no. different thing. Okay. Did Mark give you one? Mm-hmm. Okay. For the Watson Tower, that's it though. Okay. Yeah, well then I'll sign that. 
Okay. This was a separate one. I don't even think we've seen a million. Okay. Other. All right. But it was one of those things that can't, couldn't wait. So. We seem to have an air conditioning problem. We really do. <laughs> <laughs> they're all, all of our air conditioning units were built in the late 70s, and they're just uh, all dying right now. I think part of it is all the electric officials. There's a lot more hot oh, air. Oh, hot air. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, all right, briefly. <laughs> but it, anyway, to go along with Ben's uh, thing, we're, uh, we've talked to John Collins about um, doing research on getting portable, uh, uh, some portable air conditioning units for the jail after meeting with the engineering firm and then uh, having them take a look at the jail um, to replace the air conditioning system over there. They found that th that's probably going to take a little bit longer than we'd like, um, probably mostly due to the bidding process, but uh, to get that set up. And I don't think they can go any longer without some relief over there, especially in the administrative area. I don't believe that any of there's an there's a major issue in the rest of the jail, but in the administrative area where most of the staff spends their time in between running around, it's 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 pretty bad. So um, that should probably cool them off uh, in the in the short term until we get that system completely redone. Now, so it's done into the sheriff's office. Yes, yeah, it'll handle okay. the sheriff's office okay. as well. Okay. Yeah, the whole first floor basically, um, and and a lot of that the, the portable units that John's looking at do not have an exhaust port, which is one of the which has been one of the big issues is because none of the windows open up, and if they do, you really don't want them open. Um, just the, uh, as a security issue, so um, so the the units that John looked at were um, have no exhaust system. They they you basically have to drain the unit of whatever you know um, waste material that it produces, and then that's it. So honestly, just dehumidifiers would probably go a long way in helping them. Well, that that, that probably helped too, but. Um, um, at least in this case, once they're done with them, we can potentially use them in other areas when we need to right. as well. So. All right. Um, really quickly on some of our other projects. The um, annex building, there's no real update except that we're plugging away on some maintenance things. Um, ERP software, no update. We're waiting for... Um, we're waiting for the 911 consortium to make their decision on their system because if they go with the Tyler system then it would lower the price for us to get it for our ERP here in the county. Um, and they're still in the process and we're staying out of it because we don't want to bias anybody. Mm -hmm. Population migration, we're going to have Alyssa from our quasi-intern or extern from Pitt Bradford come present at one of our work sessions probably in late May, early June would be my guess. And school resource officer is done. Uh, the other stuff we're going to have the EIP do. Fiscal code though. Should we chat about that or should we just wait until the EIP goes through and have them make the recommendation? Recommendation for um, developing one? Yeah. Why don't you and I set a meeting okay. and we'll chat about what we want to do and make that decision then. So this week's jammed. Next week's jammed. Uh, the 11th is wide open, so how about the morning of the 11th? Okay. And I Jeff and I talked about the schedule threshold will likely coming. I don't remember if you were mm -hmm. here or not, but, or, but um, there is still a lot of prep work that I have to do to get get that ready. And I was talking to Pam about the other position that we have with with Margo leaving, and this will make Jeff laugh, but I feel that I need the full time position in there. <laughs> 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 I will say no. <laughs> um, there's just there's just enough things that that should be offloaded and have it there. And and I told Pam I said keeping up with capital is something the the capital list that should easily be rolled into that position because it relates right through with all the purchase orders and requisitions going on. It's just something that hasn't been paid attention to for years here and needs to be. So. Um, 
I don't know, I think maybe getting around to revising the job description, just adding a few more things in and probably post it as soon as we can. I don't anticipate right. that we're going to have anyone here before Margaret leaves, but... Um, yeah, if you work with Pam on it and okay. whatever you feel is necessary to include in it, then... A, a very big and all other duties. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be determined in a later date. <laughs> yeah, and when, yeah, and whenever you have it done, just let us know and then we'll post it on Facebook and, and, uh, and try to do some promotion on it to try to get as many resumes as we can. We've, we've had some luck with this. Um, I, I've been very happy with, with some of the recruitment we've done over the past few months. So hopefully we can we can find some gold with that as well. Yep, good. Anything else to do to order? Yeah, just so you know, we're starting our flag give out for Memorial Day. So mm. Yeah, so Ann Betts out of Sugar Grove, I believe, asked me to come speak. And then there's also one going on here at the courthouse, right? One here at the courthouse, uh, Tiddy Ute has one, Sheffield has one, Youngsville has one. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, supposed to go to the one that you went to last year. Oh, the little one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You yeah. need to tell me where that is. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's out in the middle of nowhere in Elbridge Township. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> Sanford Cemetery? Uh, what? Sanford Cemetery? Yeah. I think I know where that is. It's, on, San the it's on Sanford Road. Isn't that for that? Isn't you don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's out in the middle I could have swear I'd driven past it on my way to, to Panama. But it's, it's, it's a very pristine no. cemetery. Very pristine. It's well taken care of. Oh, it is nice, yeah. But it's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you... I will draw you a map because mm -hmm. you're not going to have cell reception you're not going to find it otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> they can't survive. It's like, come on. I used to live out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like a, you know, survivor or whatever. <laughs> when you get out there, it might be. It might be. It might be. There's that CMA church up there on the top of the hill. Oh, yeah, you did. Okay. I forgot your dad was pastor there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that past? I don't know if it's down in Eldred. That's that's. Yeah, not on the right No, I'm thinking up by by um, Steve Banco's house. See, this is why I'm going to draw you a map. <laughs> that's Farmington Township. I know. <laughs> I could have floor there was a Stanford. Uh, yes. I came from Spring Creek, obviously, so I was taking a bunch of little dirt back roads to get there. Okay. Hearing nothing else, we'll go ahead and close. Wonderful. <laughs>